Duffus Castle, a formidable stronghold from the 1100s to the 1700s, has a remarkable legacy that has captivated the imagination of generations. Originally constructed with wood and earth, this medieval marvel was reborn in the 13th century as an imposing stone fortress. Today, the castle's stone ruins still bear witness to the echoes of the past, albeit in a state of glorious ruin, showcasing the enduring power of architecture through time. The layout of Duffus Castle is one of the most typical examples of a Mott and Bailey design that I have personally encountered. It features a man-made mound with a keep perched on top. The keep has its own curtain wall, overlooking a larger curtain wall that surrounds the Bailey. The layout from the wooden fort to the stone castle would have remained largely identical with the transformation from wood to stone affecting all the walls and the keep itself. The mound leading up to the keep would likely have been kept clear, making it easier to spot invading soldiers for archers positioned within the keep. The bailey itself would have been bustling with a variety of buildings, including a church, bakers, stables, lodgings, blacksmiths, and the main well, which is still visible today among many other structures. The stone keep that stands on the site today has lost much of its original height, and historical records describing how it appeared in its prime are hard to come by. However, we can make some assumptions. When looking at similar Scottish castles, from this period, they differ from Norman keeps of the same era. They often feature bare stonework with fewer windows, large chimneys, and steep roofs. This design was likely influenced by the cold climate and the heavy snow loads experienced during Scottish winters. If anyone can shed light on what this keep once looked like, please leave a comment. And if possible, I will include a link in the description to provide a more accurate depiction, saving us all from my childish scribble here. 1130, in the heart of ancient Scotland, where the winds whispered secrets and the land bore witness to centuries of strife and valor, a gripping tale of rebellion and loyalty unfolded. The Celtic Earl of Moray, Ongus, a fearless and passionate warrior, dared to rise against the mighty King David I, forging a rebellion that would echo through the annals of history. Picture the rugged, untamed landscape of Moray, where the very earth seemed to pulse with the heartbeat of a nation in turmoil. Angus, a charismatic and valiant leader, raised his standard and rallied his followers in a bold revolt against the imposing reign of King David. It was a battle that would decide the fate of a region and the destiny of those who called it home. As the clash of swords and the roar of battle raged, Angus' forces fought valiantly but ultimately suffered a devastating defeat. The tides of history, however, were far from over. In a surprising twist, the victorious King David I, rather than obliterate the rebellion's memory, chose a path of shrewd diplomacy. David, a ruler with a keen understanding of power and alliances, decided to bestow the site of Duffus Castle on Freskin, a trusted supporter who had remained loyal to the crown. The move was not just an act of gratitude, but a strategic choice as Freskin possessed the vision and ambition to transform the battleground into a symbol of enduring power and prestige. With the mantle of responsibility placed upon him, Freskin embarked on a monumental endeavor. He laid the foundation for Duffus Castle, commencing the construction of a formidable Mott and Bailey Fortress. It was a bold endeavor that would stand as a testament to his unwavering loyalty to King David and as a symbol of power and control over the Moray region. The very ground that had once been soaked in the blood of rebellion was now transformed into a mighty citadel, watching over the ever-changing fortunes of this storied land. Duffus Castle became more than just a structure of stone and mortar and embodied a profound narrative of power, loyalty, and the enduring spirit of Scotland's tumultuous history. 1151 in a dazzling moment of history, King David himself, a figure of great power and influence, graced Duffus Castle with his presence. Imagine the thrill and anticipation that must have coursed through the very stones of the fortress when news spread that the monarch was on his way. David I, known for his strategic vision and strong leadership, embarked on a journey to Duffus Castle and what brought him to this formidable Norman stronghold was nothing short of awe-inspiring. He arrived not as a conquering king, 
but as a patron of progress and spirituality on a mission to inspect the construction of the Kinloss Abbey, a grand monastic foundation of monumental importance. The air was charged with anticipation as King David strode through the gates of Duffus Castle, a ruler who possessed the wisdom to understand that the strength of a kingdom lay not only in its military might, but also in its cultural and spiritual treasures. With every step he took, the very ground seemed to vibrate with the weight of his presence as the fate of this grand monastic endeavor hung in the balance. Picture the scene, the king, dressed in regal attire, surrounded by an entourage of nobles, priests, and scholars making his way through the castle's formidable courtyard. As he inspected the ongoing construction of Kinloss Abbey, he was not merely overseeing a building project. He was shaping the future of the region, ensuring its spiritual and cultural legacy for generations to come. The echoes of his visit still resonate in the corridors of Duffus Castle, for it was a moment when the might of the sword met the power of the pen and the sanctity of faith. The visit of King David I to Duffus Castle and his interest in Kinloss Abbey is a testament to the multifaceted importance of this remarkable fortress where history, culture, and spirituality converged. The 1100s, the story of Duffus Castle, and its connection to the prestigious de Moravian name is nothing short of thrilling and captivating. It's a tale of legacy, heritage, and the enduring power of a name. As the castle's towering walls stood strong, the legacy of Freskin, its original benefactor, was far from forgotten. It was within these ancient stones that a new chapter in the history of Moray was written. Freskin's son, William, a figure of great importance, made a defining decision that would resonate through the ages. Imagine the weight of the decision that rested on young William's shoulders. He looked upon the land of Moray, a place of both rugged beauty and tumultuous history, and he made a choice that would forever bind him to this storied region. In a bold and symbolic move, he adopted the illustrious surname de Moravia, signifying his deep connection to the land that would become his family's legacy. As the years rolled on and generations of de Moravias flourished, the family's influence grew exponentially. What had once been a mere name became a symbol of authority, strength, and a connection to the land that was second to none. The de Moravias were not just a family, they were a force to be reckoned with in the rugged and untamed region of Northeast Scotland. One of the most significant chapters in this extraordinary story was the construction of St. Peter's Church in Duffus. This was no ordinary place of worship. It was a testament to the family's deep ties to the land, a structure that would serve as their sacred mausoleum. Imagine the grandeur of this church, rising proudly against the backdrop of Duffus Castle, and the knowledge that it was destined to cradle the remains of the de Moravias for generations to come. 1270, as the direct line of Freskin came to an end, the fate of this legendary fortress hung in the balance, awaiting the arrival of a new chapter that would redefine its legacy. Picture the moment when the direct Freskin line, which had once held the castle, and its sprawling lands in its firm grip yielded to the winds of change. It was through marriage that the castle and its domains found themselves in the hands of the chains of Inverugi, a pivotal moment that would shape the castle's future in ways that none could have foreseen. The chains of Inverugi, a family known for their influence and ambition, breathed new life into the legacy of Duffus Castle. Reginald Chain, in particular, emerged as a central figure in this transformation. It is believed that Reginald Chain was the visionary force behind the construction of the square stone keep, a monumental addition to the castle's architectural tapestry. Reginald Chain's contributions extended beyond the square stone keep. Much of what is visible at Duffus Castle today, including the impressive curtain wall enveloping the inner bailey, bears the mark of his influence. It's a legacy of innovation and fortification that has left an indelible imprint on the landscape. We are about to embark on an epic tale of war, siege, and bloody clashes throughout the castle's history. But before we do, allow me to interrupt for a brief moment. On this channel, I am dedicated to serving and preserving historical accuracy for generations to enjoy. Medieval history is, well, spotty at best. If you hear anything you believe is inaccurate, or think I am missing any important information in this video, 
please leave a comment for the educational purposes of myself and my audience. 1296. Imagine the high-stakes atmosphere of a kingdom embroiled in war, where alliances were tested and loyalties pushed to the limits. Sir Reginald, a formidable figure with unshakable resolve, chose to support the English crown at a time when the winds of change were blowing fiercely across the Scottish landscape. But his choice came at a great cost. Not once, not twice, but three times, Sir Reginald faced ferocious attacks, all because of his unwavering support for King Edward I. The very walls of his existence were shaken by the thunderous forces that sought to challenge his loyalty. It was a time when bravery was put to the ultimate test, and Sir Reginald emerged as a symbol of resilience, standing tall in the face of relentless opposition. His commitment to the English cause was unwavering, and his determination to protect the interests of King Edward and the Crown was a testament to his unwavering spirit. It is here, amidst the battles, bloodshed, and bravery, that the legend of Sir Reginald was born, a legend that still resounds through the ages. 1297, the resounding clash of swords and the thunderous roar of flames paint a vivid picture of the early days of the War of Independence, a time when Edward of England cast his devastating gaze upon Duffus Castle. In this gripping chapter of history, the fate of Duffus Castle hung by a thread, as the English monarch, King Edward, made a fateful decision that would send shockwaves across the Scottish landscape. Imagine the anticipation and trepidation that filled the air as the castle's inhabitants braced for the approaching storm. Edward I, a formidable ruler, with an iron will, ordered the castle to be set ablaze. The very walls that had witnessed centuries of history were now consumed by the all-consuming flames of war. It was a moment of unparalleled devastation, a symphony of destruction that would echo through time. The flames that engulfed Duffus Castle were not just physical, they were symbolic of a kingdom's defiance, the clash of two mighty powers, and the relentless pursuit of freedom. The castle's stones, once steeped in history, were now scorched by the fires of conflict. But it was from the ashes of this devastation that the indomitable spirit of the Scottish people would rise. Duffus Castle, though wounded, would stand as a symbol of resilience, a testament to the unwavering determination of a nation that would not yield to tyranny. 1305, Reginald Chain, a man of ambition and influence, receiving a grand gift from none other than King Edward himself. 200 oaks, straight from the king's royal forest, were placed at his disposal. These were no ordinary trees. They were the building blocks of a legacy, the raw materials with which he would craft his vision. With this bounteous gift in hand, Reginald Chain embarked on an ambitious endeavor to build his manor at Duffus Castle. The construction was no ordinary task, and the end result would prove to be nothing short of extraordinary. Historians suggest that much of the stone structure we see today, as well as the formidable curtain wall surrounding the inner bailey, bear the mark of Chain's influence and vision. 1320. Picture the stirring moment when Reginald Chain II, with pen in hand and conviction in his heart, signed the legendary Declaration of Arbroath. This pivotal document, a symbol of Scotland's unyielding determination to be free, would go down in history as one of the most iconic declarations of sovereignty and self-determination. The Declaration of Arbroath, a powerful plea to the Pope, asserted the rights of the Scottish people to choose their own king and to live in liberty. Reginald Chain II's signature on this historic parchment was not just an act of ink on paper, it was a bold statement of allegiance to a cause that transcended time and place. But that's not the end of this thrilling saga. Reginald didn't stop at the declaration. He went further, entering into a peace treaty with King Bruce himself. This treaty was a pact of reconciliation and harmony, a commitment to end the bloodshed and strife that had marked Scotland's path to independence. The tumultuous times of war and strife were giving way to an era of reconciliation and nation building. Reginald's actions were instrumental in shaping a new, united Scotland, a land of peace and stability where the dream of self-determination was realized. 1350 
in a dramatic turn of events, the last chain, the guardian of Duffus Castle's legacy, breathed their final breath, marking the end of an era. The very walls that had witnessed centuries of history stood in silent witness to the closing chapter of this noble family's saga. It was a moment of transition as the castle's future hung in the balance, waiting for the emergence of a new guardian. Enter the scene, an heiress of rare pedigree, ready to assume her place in the story of Duffus Castle. This remarkable woman, a figure of strength and grace, became the torchbearer of the castle's legacy. As if drawn by destiny, she found love in the arms of Nicholas, the son of the illustrious Earl of Sutherland, sealing their union in the bonds of matrimony. Their marriage was not just a union of hearts, it was a union of legacies, where the powerful lineage of the Sutherlands intertwined with the storied history of Duffus Castle. It was a moment of promise, where the castle's future took a new and exciting turn, forever marked by the love and partnership of this remarkable couple. The castle, now under the stewardship of this newlywed heiress, and her Sutherland husband, was poised to witness a fresh era, one filled with the echoes of their laughter and the whispered secrets of their dreams. The saga of Duffus Castle was far from over. It was merely entering a new chapter filled with possibilities, romance, and the enduring power of heritage. Before exploring more the castle's history, let's delve into its connection to the supernatural. As with all medieval castles, Duffus is haunted. Visitors have recounted a series of mysterious sightings. Among the most enigmatic is the vision of an unknown woman who has been glimpsed waving from the castle's windows on occasion. Her origins remain shrouded in mystery, and her presence defies explanation. The aura of the castle seems to harbor secrets that extend beyond the bounds of time. One particularly eerie account comes from a child who claimed to have seen a red-headed woman within the castle's ancient walls. The year was 1996, and the child's encounter adds another layer to the castle's mystique. Who was this red-headed woman, and what connection did she have to the castle's storied past? But that's not all. Visitors have also captured something remarkable on camera footage, the image of a large black cat, said to be twice the size of a domestic feline. This elusive and enigmatic creature, seemingly out of place within the castle's surroundings, has left those who have seen it both puzzled and intrigued. 1452, Duffus Castle, a formidable stronghold, stood at the center of a dramatic clash of loyalties as the Douglas clan, a potent force in Scottish history, mounted a daring assault on its walls in a bold challenge to the authority of King James I. Picture the scene. The imposing silhouette of Duffus Castle against the dramatic Scottish sky, a symbol of strength and history. But on that fateful day, it was more than just stone and mortar. It was a battleground for a noble cause, a dramatic showdown that would resound through the ages. The Douglas clan, a force to be reckoned with, was in open rebellion against King James. Their cause was one of defiance, one that aimed to challenge the very core of royal authority. Duffus Castle, once a symbol of power, now found itself in the crosshairs of this daring rebellion. As the clash unfolded, swords clashed, arrows flew, and the very walls of the castle trembled under the weight of the assault. It was a thrilling moment, where the fate of a castle was entwined with the destiny of a kingdom. Duffus Castle, with its sturdy walls and storied past, bore witness to the intensity of this pivotal confrontation. 1639 to 1651. Within these ancient stone walls, a thrilling chapter in Scottish history played out as royalist forces under the command of the formidable Sir James Graham descended upon the castle in a dramatic clash of loyalties and power. Picture the scene, the tranquil setting of Duffus Castle, where once again, history would be written with the ink of warfare. The wars of three kingdoms were a time of political upheaval an ideological conflict, and Duffus Castle stood as a symbol of those turbulent times. Sir James Graham, a resolute leader of the Royalist forces, was a figure of power and influence. With unshakable determination, he led his troops into battle against those who opposed the Royalist cause. Duffus Castle became a battleground, a stage for the clash of ideologies and the pursuit of power. As the drama unfolded, the very air was charged with tension and anticipation. Swords clashed, muskets roared, 
and the ancient stones of Duffus Castle bore witness to the intensity of the conflict. It was a battle not just for territory, but for the very soul of a kingdom. 1689, Duffus Castle, a hallowed ground of intrigue and history, was graced by the presence of none other than John Graham, a leader whose name would become synonymous with the Jacobite Uprising. His visit to the castle marked a pivotal moment in the lead up to the Battle of Killy Cranky, a conflict that would ignite the passions of a nation. Picture the scene, Duffus Castle, a silent sentinel amidst the Scottish landscape, stood as a symbol of resilience and history in the midst of the Jacobite Uprising, a fervent movement to restore the exiled King James II to the throne. John Graham, a charismatic and influential leader, made his way to the castle's storied walls. His visit was more than just a casual stop. It was a moment of strategic importance. John Graham, also known as Bonnie Dundee, was a figure of great significance in the Jacobite cause. His presence at Duffus Castle signaled the alignment of forces and the gathering of like-minded rebels in pursuit of a shared goal. As he walked through the ancient chambers and gazed upon the weathered stones of the castle, one can only imagine the weight of history that must have hung in the air. It was a time of excitement, of preparation, and of unwavering resolve to challenge the prevailing order. Soon after John Graham's visit to Duffus Castle, the Battle of Killy Cranky would erupt into a thrilling showdown between Jacobite forces and the government troops. The legacy of that battle would go on to shape the course of Scottish history and the enduring symbolism of the Jacobite cause. 1705, in a moment of transition, and change, Lord Duffus, a figure of importance and influence, passed away. His life, rich with history and the heritage of Duffus Castle, marked the end of an era. As the castle's guardian, he had overseen its fortunes and history, but now a new chapter was about to begin. The family, with a legacy intrinsically tied to the castle and the surrounding lands, made a significant decision. They chose to move to a new residence, Duffus House, located near the castle site. This was more than just a change of address. It was a symbolic step into the future, while preserving the essence of the past. It was more than just a residence. It was a continuation of the family's connection with the land and the castle's heritage. Stone, perhaps reclaimed from the castle itself, was used in the construction of Duffus House, ensuring that the castle's spirit lived on in the very walls of their new home. The move to Duffus House was a moment of transition, but it was also an affirmation of the family's enduring bond with their ancestral lands. It was a pledge to carry forward the castle's legacy into a new era, a commitment to preserving the history and heritage that had shaped their family for generations. Introducing Carlisle Castle, the wars between Scotland and England and the role of Duffus Castle pales in comparison to that of Carlisle Castle. This site witnessed some of the largest sieges ever seen on English soil. For a more comprehensive history on the Three Kingdom Wars, the Jacobite Uprising, and the legendary figures of Robert the Bruce and Edward Longshanks, be sure to watch the video linked here on your screen.